So I've suggested to you that these last three things that we're going to study in our coverage of the 1960s all hold together. Uh, the question really that we're asking is, if you're an African American in the United States in the 1960s and there is a movement towards civil rights, how will true recognition be gained? Now we've just had one idea of how true recognition is gained given to us by the author Ralph Ellison. In order to be recognized, you have to assort yourself. You have to make people see you physically for them to kind of turn their attention to you. And he suggests, right, that there may be a darker side of this asserting of oneself, but only through assertion uh, can we get the world to where it needs to be. The second uh, item in this uh, coverage of, of the material comes to you in the clips that were shown in Spike Lee's um, uh, autobiography, or biography, excuse me, a biographical film of Malcolm X. Where do we see Malcolm X uh, at the beginning of this film? We see him as someone who, much like many other Americans, has had his life defined for him. He's checked off the boxes that he's told to check off. Uh, he's told to do X, he's told to do Y, he told, he's told to do Z, and some of those things he does well and others he doesn't. So he turns at the beginning to a life of crime, a, cr a life of recklessness. Uh, he finds himself in jail for um, the crimes that he's committed. And it's only when he gets into jail that he is given a suggestion of a new person. And that suggestion comes right through his understanding of the Black Power movement, uh, the movement of Elijah Muhammad, suggesting to him what? Suggesting to him that American society has never been framed so as to include he as an African American into itself that there can be no assimilation of African Americans given the current ruling regime. Malcolm X will tell us that all of the economic apparatus that's put into place has been put into place for the benefit of white people. Black men in slavery, black men beyond slavery are just tools for white men. Likewise, politically, black men are visited during election season by white candidates. But at the end of the day, do white leaders care about black men? Malcolm X answers no. Theologically, uh, do white men care about black men's souls? And the answer once again is no. So on every level of society, theologically, economically, politically, socially, the whole system has been set up by white men for white men. Remember Lincoln's famous phrase, of, by, and for the American people. What Malcolm X learns in jail is by, for, and of some people, and not to the benefit of others. So what's it going to take, according to Malcolm X, to revise things? What's it going to take to revolutionize American society? Now, what Malcolm X offers is something that sounds a little bit like what we get in Ellison's book. So assertion is necessary. Right? The desire to have power and assert that power is important. But then Malcolm X adds something to this. He's like, we're not going to be able to ever get white people to see us for who we are. So what we need to do is we need to come together as black men and women, and we need to form our own societies. We need to form our own political systems. We need to form our own economic systems. We need to take care of one another. And here it's kind of really interesting what is being presented by Malcolm X. Malcolm X is telling right, his fellow African Americans that there's no way to revitalize the American cave to make it a cave that is to the benefit of black men living within it. If anything, black men and women need to remove themselves from this white American cave and establish their own political communities. Now, this is the suggestion, we will take our lives into our own hands. We will become overseers, just like everyone else. And, and what's so interesting about this is that it, it requires a differentiation between oneself and another. It requires a segregation of oneself from another. So yes, uh, black men and women had lived through this awful segregation in the past. But integration of the one that was being suggested by the civil rights law, et cetera, is not something that Malcolm X believes is going to lead the African-American community out of the dilemma they find themselves in. So his position is different uh, from Ellison. And as we'll see in our last clip, 
that will be different than that offered by Martin Luther King Jr.